Today, we are working with equations. So yesterday, we converted points. Today, we're going to convert equations. So we are going to graph r equals 3. It's a really simple graph, and we can do it in polar form. But what our job today is to take a polar form uh, equation and rewrite it in uh, x and y. And so we're going to rewrite it in rectangular form. So r equals 3. What shape do you think r equals 3 is going to be? It is a circle. Morgan, why do you think it's a circle? This sounded like a good answer. I agree. That does sound like a good answer. What does R stand for? Radius. radius. So if the radius is 3, it's a circle with a radius of 3. Break out your calculators real quick. Let's look at it. So we are going to graph R equals 3 on our calculator to see what that looks like. Uh, hit the mode button. We are changing modes. What as you look at those modes, what mode do you think we need to be in? Polar. Polar. Radians is OK. Ra it doesn't really matter radians or degrees. I'm going to stick in radians um, for what we're doing. But I'm in radians. But the key here is polar. All right? We want to make sure we're in polar. Hit the Y equals button. Now it is hit mode and go to polar. Now we're hitting the Y equals button. When we hit the Y equals button, now it says R. We want to graph r equals 3, so I'm going to type in the number 3, and I'm going to hit graph. I hate this about our calculators. Our screen, our screen is rectangular, and so it's really ugly. Okay, That graph has been stretched, so what we can do here, you can do lots of different things. I'm going to hit the zoom button, and my students earlier today said their favorite one was zoom 4, and so I don't know what zoom decimal means, but we're going to do it, and it gives you a very nice pretty circle when you do that zoom. You can. So everybody good with that? It's a circle. If you hit the R e Y equals button and you wanted to play around, you could do three and two and one, and you would get a cool little bullseye thing happening there. But you can do some different stuff with that. If we go back to this graph, we can put R equals three on this graph. R equals 3, it's going to be a circle. The center's at 0, 0. The radius is 3. So you got to go up 3, down 3, left 3, right 3. And you got to draw your best circle. So good luck with that. Oh, yeah, the perfect circle. So we know all of that information, but we still haven't been able to put it in terms of x and y. So what we need to do now is convert this equation. R equals 3. I want to rewrite it with x and y. I need to replace R with x and y. What equation do we know that would allow us to take out R and put x and y in its spot? Pythagorean theorem. R squared equals x squared plus y squared, however you want to say it. It's all the same. But I can't just do that substitution yet. Because r squared is equal to all those things. How do I make this thing r squared? So let's square it. So we are going to square both sides. So it's now r squared equals 9. Since I have now written it as r squared, I can now do my substitution. I'm going to replace r squared with what r squared is. r squared is the same thing as x squared plus y squared. And now I have my equation of the circle, x squared plus y squared equals 9. We now could technically graph that on a coordinate graph as opposed to our polar graphs. Questions on the first one? Cool. Let's go to number 2. Theta equals negative 225 degrees. This one you can't type into your calculator. On our calculator, it all says r equals. Now we're saying theta equals negative 225. Think about that for a second. Talk with your neighbor. Decide what is negative 225 degrees going to look like as a graph. What is theta equals negative 225 going to look like? It is a line. Here's 225 on my unit circle. 225 is this guy right here. It's this line. If it's negative theta, what's that going to do to it? Flip it up. So it's the same thing as 135. My graph is that. That's my graph. It is this line that goes across 135. It doesn't say anything about R. I don't care what R is. R can be positive and go upwards, 
or it could be negative and going downwards. But my graph is this diagonal line from one corner of my graph to the other. So when I put this on my paper, I'm drawing the line from here to there. If I asked you to write the equation of that line, what could you write that equation of that line as? Y equals negative X. My slope is negative 1. So that one's pretty easy. We did that, and we could use just our common sense and get the equation Y equals negative X. Let's use some substitution here to get to that point. So right now I've got theta. I don't want theta. I want Y and X. What formula do I know that can replace theta with Y and X? Tangent of theta. So we can't just do tangent yet. We would have to make it tangent of theta. And so if I take the tangent of theta, I also have to take the tangent of negative 225 degrees. Now that I've done that, I can substitute. Tangent of theta is y over x. Tangent of negative 225 is going to be, that's negative 1. I want to get y by itself, so cool. I'll multiply both sides by x. Guess what? y equals negative x. It didn't matter which way we got there. We could get there no matter what. No matter what way we did, it's going to give us that same line with a negative 1 slope. Questions on 2? Try number 3. r equals 2 cosecant theta. Think about it. Talk with your neighbor. Figure out what it is. Show me with your arm what shape did you end up with on this one. Oh, we, all right, we didn't get it. My other classes have all gotten it at some point. The answer to this question is this. It is a flat horizontal line. That's all it is. There's some different things we can do with this, and I saw some of us talking about it. Some of you initially took R and you squared it. If you square that side, then you got to square the other side and you get into some funky mess that's happening over there. That might work. There might be a great way of changing that back to what we want. I don't want to mess with that. That gets into some pretty ugliness pretty quickly. Instead, I'm going to write it one way, and then I'll show you how my students did it earlier. So r equals 2. It's cosecant, so I could write that all over sine theta. I don't like that sine theta on bottom, so I'm going to multiply both sides by sine theta. I've got r sine theta. What can I put in place of r sine theta? That's why, because sine of theta equals y over r. So r sine theta is all equal to y. r sine theta is all equal to y. y equals 2. It is simply a horizontal line at y equals 2 that crosses the y-axis at 2. That's it. That's all you got to do. I have always taught it that way, and it makes a lot of sense to me. Here's what my students did earlier. They did this, cosecant. Cosecant is r over y. So they multiplied y to both sides. So y r equals 2r. Well, you got an r on both sides, so who cares about that r? It's y equals 2. Don't care which way you do it. I think the other way works all the time. I had never taught it that way before, and kids keep doing it, and it makes a lot more sense to me. It's just using the same thing we always know. Questions there? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Number four says r equals negative 2 cosine theta. r equals negative 2 cosine theta. See what you can do. Play around with it for a second. I don't want to stifle your creativity. Use your creativity to try to figure out something that's happening here. We, st we start off with this thing. I'm going to show you the way I – well, let's call on somebody here. Uh, Emily, you guys did this well. Uh, what did you guys do to start off with? Okay, so R equals negative 2, and then they plugged in what cosine was, which was X over R. Cool. Multiplied both sides by R. Negative 2X. Good. X squared plus Y squared. She wanted to replace R squared is equal to X squared plus Y squared. Yeah, now we know it's a circle. We've got X squared. We've got Y squared. Now this is what we did in bell work. 
We're putting everything on the same side. So x squared plus 2x plus a blank plus y squared is equal a blank. We moved everything over. We took this negative 2x and put it right there. We added a blank to finish the trinomial. And if we added a blank on this side, we balanced it out by adding a blank on the other side. To fill in the blank, remember you take half of b squared. What is half of 2? 1. 1 squared is 1. And then we are completing the square. You are going to factor this thing right here. Oh, not with a black pen. Let's try a highlighter instead. Factor that thing right there. So that guy right there is going to become x something squared plus y squared is equal to 1. So it's x plus 1. You're going to cut that 2 in half to get plus 1. That is my graph. I'll show you how I've always taught this, and you'll probably say, oh, I'm going to do it the other way. But I'll show you what I did. We want this to become r squared. Right now it says r. If we square it, then we got to square both sides. It gets ugly. Instead, you could just multiply both sides by r. So then you get r squared is equal to negative 2 cosine r cosine theta. You could replace what r cosine theta is. And then do the same thing from there. It's same process. Either way is great. I like Emily's way better. That's how I've taught it in the past. But I changed after today because I deal with smart kids. I graphed this thing x plus 1 point. Which direction is that plus 1 going to take you? Left. We go left 1. There's my starting dot. What's my radius going to be? Square root that 1. My radius is 1. I'm up 1, down 1, left 1, right 1. There is my circle. If we go to our calculator and we type this thing in, what was it? R equals negative 2 cosine theta. If I were to graph that, notice when you hit the theta button now, it gives you a theta. There, the x button, it gives you theta. You hit graph, there's my shape. I just got the other shapes on top of it. It is kind of a Venn diagram. There is, if you're looking to spend time in other classes and you're bored, go to polar graphs and start typing stuff in because they're fun. Questions with this guy? No one likes you. All right. On your paper, do this one. Uh, cosine theta equals negative 3 over r. Put that in standard form. Decide what that picture is going to look like. Do that now. Show me with your hands. What's that graph look like? Vertical line, Max, what'd you do? Yep. X equals negative three. It's a vertical, or a, yeah, vertical line. Crosses the x-axis at negative three. One, two, three. Whee, that's the greatest graph I've ever drawn. This one, uh, let's go R equals pi. R equals pi. Think about what that shape's going to be. R equals pi. Do that. Show me with your hands. What's the shape going to be? It's a circle. It's R equals. So it's a radius is equal to. It's a circle. The radius is equal to a number. It's a circle. What's the radius of the circle going to be? Just pi. Technically, if we want to put it in the right form, we would square both sides. Now I've got R squared. X squared plus Y squared equals pi squared, but the radius is just going to be pi. Don't let that be weird to you just because I wrote it strange. Uh, let's do this one. Theta equals pi over 3. Theta equals pi over 3. Think about that one. Show me with your arms. What's that shape look like? That's just a line. It's theta equals pi over 3. Think about a unit circle. Where is pi over 3? Right there, it is a line through that dot. That is what that graph looks like. If you want to do it the technical way, you take the tangent of both sides. Tangent of theta is y over x. Tangent of pi over 3 is radical 3. You multiply both sides by x. y equals the square root of 3x. That's the world's worst slope, but it's a slope. It's 1.7 and some change. Questions on that one? One more. Try this one. Uh, let's do 
r equals 4 sine theta. Figure out that one. Should be a circle. I multiplied both sides by r. I rewrote sine as y over r. Multiplied both sides by r. Those canceled. r squared equals 4y. Replaced r squared with x squared plus y squared. Now I'm completing the square. What, show me with your fingers what number is going in that blank right there. Half of b squared. Half of 4 is 2. 2 squared is 4. And then when I factor that thing, it's going to be x squared plus y squared is equal to 4. I'm factoring that thing right there. It is going to be negative 2. Point. Which direction is that negative 2 taking your graph? It's up because it's with our y, and it's a negative. Questions with that? I'm going to jump into one quick thing here. We're not doing this whole part. This is the easiest thing you'll ever be taught in this class. It seems super complex, but the concept or the actual doing it is easy. When we talk about polar numbers, we always talk about complex numbers as well. The reason we do it is because complex numbers in polar form are super easy. It's a weird world that we're living in right now. Okay, Polar, complex, so we got I's and, it, and R's and thetas. It gets kind of strange. Just deal with it. Accept it. Harness the energy, and it'll be fine. When we deal with a rectangular complex number, a number like this, we can use that number and treat it as if it said x plus i y. The number that's real is your x value. The number with the imaginary part is the imaginary number. So if we were to graph this thing, think of this line right here as like a true number line, like third grade math number line where it goes from zero and negative, infi negative infinity one side, infinity on the other. We can graph this point right here on this number line. The two is my x value. That goes on my real axis. It goes on my x-axis. So if it's two, it's taking me to the right two. But it's not a real number because I have this five with my i. You treat that like your y value. And so it's pulling me off that axis, off the number line, and it's taking me up five, that right there is me graphing the ordered pair to, or the complex number two plus five i. It's like an x and a y value. Does that make sense how we did that? Do the next one. Negative one plus three i. Graph that guy. Show me with your fingers which quadrant is that guy in. Two. You've got a negative x value, a positive y value. That's negative 1 plus 3i. And if I wanted to graph this one, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, and down five, square root of 5. So it's like 2 and some change. 